Should we start with Prey? As, yeah, let's. Um, that was what you just mentioned. Uh, so this is the second series of the drama that is written by a friend of the podcast, Chris Lunt, oh, right. as you've interviewed him multiple times. Uh, which makes this next piece hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, the first series, as we all remember, John Sim was on the run trying to clear his name after they thought he'd murdered his wife and son. Uh, this series, it's sort of a bit different. It's Philip Glenister's security, no security, a prison guard um, mm-hmm. who's forced to go on the run with one of his prisoners, played by Mayanna Buring. Um, I think it's Buring. Buring, but... Buring. Um, after he receives a phone call saying his pregnant daughter is being held captive and if he doesn't help this prisoner escape, then she'll presumably die. Uh, so it's a bit different, you know. He's breaking the law to help his family member, whereas in the first Ooh. series, it was it was basically the fugitive. The can, one can link I, can I just them interrupt? Is, uh, I, Idris mm-hmm. Elba is on the one show. Just thought I'd let you know. Uh, Rosie Caviero is the one link between uh, the two series, playing Susan Reinhardt, the uh, detective who in the first series sort of worked out what was going on uh, in the John Sim investigation here. It sort of starts that she and uh, her partner, her new sort of younger cop partner, played by Nathan Stewart Jarrett, are sort of investigating uh, the death of someone who happens to be the brother of the Mayan Buring character. And then from there, that sort of links into the Philip Glenister storyline. And by the end, you have the classic, let's put the stunt thing at the start and then show it again later on, mm. them jumping into the water. One I of Luke's favourite... Uh, things, it's isn't it? such a, it's such a gimmick because I I think they did it in I mean, series I, one as well, did I? Yeah, I watched this with the family, and of course, it it's a gimmick that I'm afraid because all we're doing Your family the whole are thing, they your family? Yes, they are. Yes. Um, the whole time we're watching it, we just we kept saying to each other, so when they're going to get to the bit where they jump in the river with the yeah. uh, with the cuffs on? And you can't a, then, you know, you're just anticipating that they did this. Yeah, you spend your whole like time the driver waiting as for well that. Last year, yeah. I remember was similar. I tell you why it annoys me as a gimmick It's because it's saying to the audience, if you're bored, at the, if you're bored later, stick with us because mm. this is going to happen. Mm. And this is good. And I don't think you need to do that with any drama. Feels very much um, like nuts and bolts, as I said to you last night. Very. Um, Mark Kermode always has a thing. He calls it uh, tab A into slot B. You know, going mm. through the motions. And I, I, I think we all loved last series. Um, and we, you know, we're fans of Chris. I think on yeah. on the plus side, I am intrigued enough to watch the second episode. I think yeah, there's and, enough. Uh, Intrigue we, and the we both said my Anna, my Anna particularly was good, yeah, because <laughs> she plays a different role. Obviously, we know her best from Ripper Street. She and, always plays sort of seductress, yeah, though, in she? Banished She's, as well. Um, yeah, but here playing like a dowdy prisoner. But I think she sort of knows more than she's letting on, and it'll be interesting to see where it goes. Again, if it wasn't a three, if it was a six, then I might not stick with it. Um, but if if it was a six, we would at least get to know Philip Lannister a bit more. Yeah. And I think he, the problem had... is um, that we don't. We've only see him and his daughter together for one scene. One scene. It's that. very black work in mm, that respect. Mm. And obviously, you know, you're reading between the lines. A father would always do, do anything to save his daughter, sort yeah. of thing. But you it, don't. It you, reminds... you don't meet her enough. To really care mm. about her fate. It reminds me a bit of a film I don't know if you've seen yet, but it was years ago, Taken, where, mm. of course, you you're interested in how he's going to get his daughter back, but at no point do you actually care about Liam Neeson's character. At no point do you even know what his name is. I mean, his name's kind of, but and of course you know he's going to get her back at the end. So what prey lacked for me this time? Is the fact that I really didn't care. Because like, you still, I still remember it. the scenes with uh, John Sim and the wife, which were perfect. You know, they were quick, but they perfectly set up everything it... that you needed to know why they mm. would suspect him, what the relationship was like. You know, his mm. closeness with his sons, and I think Chris Lund did that so well last year. And I think mm. you could have had time to do that similarly with, you know, just to see because when you saw the daughter as well, she was just having a go at him. Yeah. <laughs> And he ignored her call several mm. times as well, mm. uh, but I, I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, there's only three, and it's not. It's a quick watch because uh, it is fast-paced. But whether I actually liked it enough, I don't know. 